I'd like to bring the College of Complexes to order. My name is Tim. I will help moderate today along with Andy Anderson. The College of Complexes consists of the following format. First, we'll have a brief announcements period. Then we'll have our speaker who will speak up to an hour or thereabouts. Then we'll have a question and answer period. We'll ask for questions only at that point. And then at the end, somewhere about 10 to 8 or 8 o'clock, we'll go to a rebuttal period where you can rebut on or off the subject. And uh, at least back. She's going to be talking about deep state, conspiracy theory, or hidden history. Who are the Illuminati? Ellen Corley, College of Complexes regular with 20 plus years of experience as a business intelligence analyst, will give an overview of the latest research on the deep state, according to leading scholars on the subject, Peter Dale Scott and Mike Levy. Lofgren. She will also give a scholarly assembly assessment of what conspiracy theories about the nature of the deep state are true and which are false relative to the deep state's connections to the 9-11 and the Illuminati New World Order. Sounds like an interesting state, interesting speech. Let's give a round and rousing work welcome to Ellen Corley. Okay. Well, hi. Uh, thanks, everybody, for being here. Uh, as he said, I'm Ellen Corley. Uh, I've been coming here for the last couple of years, I think, and uh, I love this free speech forum. It's really been an important part of my uh, political development. <laughs> learning to have a voice and the courage of my convictions and the courage to speak up when sometimes it's easier to be silent. Um, <clears throat> so anyhow, uh, I gave this talk last in January of 2017 and I, you can go back and watch that one. Uh, and that one I did what I learned as an English teacher you're supposed to do, which is not read. But um, <laughs> this time, to stay more focused, I've written down what I'm going to say, and hopefully it'll make more sense. Um, okay, uh, so the deep state, conspiracy theory or hidden theory. Uh, based on an environmental scan and a content analysis of the news media over the last few years, my conclusion as a professional strategic intelligence research analyst is that the United States of America has been essentially taken over by a globalist military industrial corporate coup d'etat. The reality of our current sociological situation at this point in history, July 21st, 2018, is being hidden from us by what I think is best described as the New World Order, or the Fourth Reich, or the corporate security state, which is being run by a Nazi fascist, <clears throat> imperialist, deep state, shadow government that manufactures and handles our elected leaders in both parties at the federal, state, and local levels the same way the news media and politicians in both parties are now saying the totalitarian authorities of the enemies of our state, the Russians, handle whoever is in elected to office, or if it's in another party, whether it be Trump or Clinton or Carter or Ortega in Colombia, or another other, whether they be Russian, Chinese, Iranian, Muslim, or communist, or some other kind of other. So this is the other, <laughs> it's demonized the other strategy that was developed under Hitler by Carl Schmitt. <laughs> Okay, there are several different definitions of the deep state, which I will attempt to assess briefly in this talk, in this top line executive summary of my research. On an overall basis, what I mean when I talk about the deep state is I am talking about an investigative or forensic historical research method, which some historians and scholars and 9-11 truth researchers like Peter Dale Scott and Guillaume Laurent and David Ray Griffin and Christopher Bolin and Dean Henderson and myself sometimes call 
deep state research, which is essentially that we use an investigative research method similar to what some people also call historiography. An ex it's like social science, using history uh, as a social science. An excellent definition of deep state research is given in the introduction to what is probably my favorite book in terms of explaining what happened on 9-11 and who the perpetrators were and what the deep state is. The subject of this book is the deep history of the United States. Of, so I'm, I'm basically reading the introduction to this book. I wish it'd be a much better speech if I just kept reading it, but um, this is, this is Guillaume Lurion, a an engineer from, from uh, France who uh, basically wrote this and published it under Progressive Press. The subject of this book is the deep history of the United States and its sphere of influence during the last 50 years. By deep history or deep politics, political scientist Peter Dale Scott refers to the underlying and often shrouded decisions and activities that determine major historical events, especially armed conflicts. A deep history relies on declassified secret archives and the testimony of insiders and whistleblowers rather than merely official pronouncements and public discourse to explain history's tumult. It includes, but is not limited to, the history of secret services. The United States intelligence community includes 16 government agencies. Considering that the causes of war cited in conventional history are so often rife with false pretense, deep history is necessarily revisionist. Independent investigators study it more often than professional historians. It is also anti-war, since exposing the real causes of war will help prevent wars. Finally, it involves conspiracy theories. If by that we mean that it openly admits the role of secret pacts and hidden agendas, undercover and <laughs> military operations, psychological warfare and disinformation campaigns in the, in the course of world politics since the beginning of the Cold War. Increasingly since September 11th, in fact, only a deep history can help explain the shift from the world of the Cold War to the world of our amorphous war on terror. An important part of a deep history is devoted to false flag operations in which a state feigns an enemy attack in order to wage a war while claiming legitimate defense. That is, framing the country it wants to attack and the, as the aggressor. Conventional history, written by the victors, readily impute such operations to the defeated nations. We know that in 1931, when the Japanese army decided to invade Manchuria, that they dynamited their own railway lines and near the military base in Mukdan, and then, then, then accused the Chinese of the sabotage. We also know that in 1939, when Hitler needed a pretext to invade Poland, he ordered German soldiers and prisoners dressed in Polish uniforms to launch an assault on the Leibowitz outpost. And we suspect that just prior, in 1933, the Nazis had set fire to the palace of the Reichstag to construct a communist conspiracy and thereby suspend civil liberties. The victorious nations, however, assiduously buried their own lives and war crimes. And it is the role of a deep history to exhume them. I will read more from this if I have time. But bottom line is I recommend it highly for its history and its example of deep state historical research and the truth about who the real perpetrators of 9-11 were. The top three books I would recommend as excellent examples of deep history research are the following. 9-11, you know, 50 Years of Deep History, Laurent Guillenot, Progressive Press, ProgressivePress.com is an excellent, also an excellent site to visit for other deep state research analyses on 9-11. And Laurent Guillenot has written excellent articles updating his research with current analyses. Also, Solving 9-11, The Deception That Changed the World. Christopher Bolin, published by, under, by www.bolin.com. I highly recommend mining this web, his website as well. 
info.lynn.com because it seems to be even better than the book in terms of constantly updated pictures and details and you can just print it out. Um, also, black terror, white soldiers, Islam terrorism in the new age by David Livingstone, uh, Sibelia Publications. David Livingstone's website, Conspiracy School, is also excellent. It's like a reference. If you just look at its index, you get the truth over thousands of years of history. Um, amazing. Okay, um, these guys you can follow on the internet also, on Facebook. The following is my take. So now the following is my take on the world based on deep state research I've been doing and written about in comments on Facebook, but have not yet written into any book. Um, to my mind, deep state research is a method best expressed by 9-11 investigators who have connected the dots in a way that exposes the big lies of fake history that's been written by the victors to cover up their criminal sources and methods and their conspiratorial agenda. A specific area I've focused on is revisionist Zionist history because I think it needs to be exposed because of its undue influence as a driver of imperialism over the last hundred years. And because there's considerable consensus among deep state 9-11 truth scholars that the deep state revisionist Zionists like Benjamin Netanyahu and Rahm Emanuel and Rudy Giuliani and Donald Trump and the Project for a New America authors who essentially wrote the blueprint for 9-11 as the new Pearl Harbor are all essentially following the playbook of the revisionist Zionist Likud party and taking the Israel as a base of operations for taking the Middle East and the Far East for the Fourth Reich. It's important that people understand that when I say I'm a researcher focusing on exposing the role of revisionist Zionism in 9-11, it's important to clarify I am not denying the reality of the Holocaust and the war on the Jews. On the contrary, I'm trying to bring to justice the evildoers who were behind Hitler and who are hiding behind the good Jews who found safe haven in Israel. What I'm trying to do is bring, it's to separate the lies from the truth in history so that the wolves in sheep's clothing in the deep state, people like Benjamin Netanyahu and Rahm Emanuel and Donald Trump are brought to justice and removed from office so that we can give peace a chance. As a few of my friends here know, I am, I am not saying, <clears throat> saying anything about Zionism is a dangerous thing to write about. If one wants to keep their job or survive politically in the corporate media or politics in general, it's basically taboo. And worse, if someone really starts to talk about it, they're often threatened with their life. That's what happened to Christopher Boleyn, had to leave Chicago. He was beat up by the police here. Um, and. Uh, didn't get a fair trial and now lives in Sweden with his family. He writes about it online. This is why I feel it's so important to write about. As George Orwell said, write about what they don't want you to write about. Everything else is public relations. Basically, this is why I feel it's so important to write about this third rail. In other words, I believe it's critically important to expose that it was not Osama bin Laden or the Muslims that orchestrated 9-11 but rather 9-11 was a false flag attack that was orchestrated by the U.S. and Western intelligence agencies, the CIA, MI6, Mossad, NATO, and other intelligence agencies as a pretext for pursuing the war on terror by blaming it falsely on an enemy that we created so that we could suspend civil rights and pursue a permanent war that can never be won because it's impossible and unconstitutional to wage a war on terror any more than a war can be waged on communism or cyber terrorism. The deep state imperialists who I'm determined to expose created an enemy out of an innocent group and I'm determined to bring these wrongfully convicted out of prisons, the prisons that our imperial war state, security state has put them in with their big lives. In other words, the terrorists we need to stop was not been Osama bin Laden and the Middle East Islamic community, but rather our own evil CIA banking cabal that is hiding in plain sight. The deep state research I am interested in is research that effectively makes the case that there is a group of hidden militarists who are funding a forever political campaign to take over the world legally through covert geopolitical economic warfare. Basically, the value of deep history or deep political method 
is that we use investigative or forensic methods to expose the answers to the questions the state-controlled media and intelligence agencies and politicians and legal system is not asking. To give a specific example of the method, as I write this, I'm listening to NPR's Morning Edition giving an informative summary of the clips of Trump's sound bites from last week saying he doesn't see why Putin would or wouldn't interfere in our elections. And this seemingly comprehensive analysis of what and why the president is doing or saying what he's saying, we never get the media to draw the conclusions that need to be drawn, which is why Trump is not being held to the same kind of standard that another president would be held to by other branches of government or the media. What, what we've seen ever since America was tricked into entering the Spanish-American War and the World War I through false flag attacks and yellow journalism and propaganda is a political hijacking of our democracy for the purposes of war profiteering by the state. This is why none of the president's promises to end wars ever actualized. Basically, even the most peace-seeking of presidents we have elected, people like Jimmy Carter, are not able to stop the warmongering neocons and neoliberals from <clears throat> covertly perpetrating their forever war on democratically elected states who attempt to nationalize their own resources because deep state orchestrators of the dirty wars are financing these covert dirty wars without the public's or the president's knowledge. They have been doing this for years by having the CIA or the NSA being at the helm of the media, censoring the news in order to perp perpetrate the wars and keep the public and the president in the dark through media censorship, suppression, blackouts. This is what George Orwell was writing about in 1984, which is why we are teaching it in schools, hopefully. As I listen to the news, I also hear an interesting interview with a Russian media analyst named Alexander Malkovich, who has has developed a Russian radio show called USA Really. Basically, he rightly gives context to the way the way U.S. media frames issues in a way that pushes a right-wing Cold War interventionist foreign policy. Even NPR. Then NPR puts on a supposedly neutral Washington expert from Daily Beast that acknowledges that this Russian media's you know, position on presenting the need to pull out of Syria does more fairly represent the U.S. left's perspective. But, you know, it. the bottom line is what I am saying is that I see the news media as having been co-opted by a right-wing military imperialist foreign policy agenda, and I see... Deep state research as being the methodology the true left wing people like Orwell, Arendt, Einstein, Sartre, Lynch, Mao, Roosevelt, Carter, Hedges, Zen, Chomsky, Sanders, Kennedy, Malcolm X, King, and all humanitarian, anti war, progressive, democratic, socialist, human rights, social justice movements are trying to say. My goal is to expose the right wing propaganda machine in a way that effectively persuades the United States machine that we need to restore right regulation base, based on the fact that a corporation with billions is not a person and does not have the right to take over the public estate through privatization and supply side schemes that are essentially methods of a fascist coup d'etat. That's where I left it off. But uh, so, yeah, that's it. <laughs> You're done, with, you're done with your speech now? What? You're done? Yes. Okay. Yeah, questions? Yeah, any questions? <laughs> Comments? All right. Observations? Questions for you. Yes. Hi. Questions, comments, So where is the deep state uh, in relation to what's going on now? And like, I, I think they're best described as the covert operations of the intelligence agencies and Wall Street. That they work together, you know. Um, it's, uh, is that clear? I, it's, uh, it's the, it's the career of the senior, senior executive service. The senior executive service. Services. Yeah, so those are like, that's what the deep state is. It's like these 8,000 people in the, that, that are, that, 
control? Eight eight thousand people. Yeah, seven. Yeah, they're they're without credentials. Uh, uh, like seven thousand of them were appointed by Obama. But like, uh, I haven't heard that. Yeah, look, I, at, um, look at the SES or the Senior Executive Services. Senior Executive Services. I, that's what the deep state. That's I have, the official. You can find out who all those people are, and like from that uh, like that Peter Stroke guy. On who? who? Uh, you know that guy in the news or in the TV, that guy Peter Stroke? Or I think Peter Stroke. Stroke? I don't know. I don't know how to pronounce his last name. Is he, wasn't he the one that was in Washington? Or I, I, uh, he's, he's in there. Okay. I have, my take on, there is a, I think the Trump administration and basically the, who I think is a right wing, you know, <laughs> uh, moles put in all the media, they, you know, they basically confuse the idea of the deep state, like they're the ones that are going after Trump, you know, and um, I, that's not the deep state that the scholars that I'm talking about. Peter Dale Scott, uh, he's at Berkeley, he um, has written books, really starting with the Kennedy assassination and really exposing the, it's the military industrial complex that Eisenhower was talking about and it's, it's kind of, um, you know, the, the, after the Cold War, the CIA was started by Alan Dulles, and um, Hi, how are you? he was a Nazi, basically, and worked with Reinhard Gellin and Carl Schmidt to bring about covert operations. And so they basically led the dirty wars in uh, Iran and the South America and Indonesia. So it's the... It's classified. We don't see that the United States, you know, we saw it in Iran-Contra, what was really going on. But they're, these people are profiteering. They, they have run the opium, all the opium. They waged the Vietnam War as a way to, so they could get the opium uh, out of that area. So it, it's a, um, it's the underground, like a chemical, uh, organized crime you know, state-sponsored organized crime that if you named them, you would be killed. They're protected by a code of silence, like the mafia. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Well, you, you say that American American Nazis are trying to uh, uh, take over the government and rule the world. I think that's ridiculous. What you got to watch out for is people, these liberals and radicals like George Soros, yeah. who, who said, uh, Many, uh, 20, 30 years ago, if he could get rid of the American middle class, he could rule the world. What about George Soros? What about these radicals? I, I am a left winger, and I, I basically think that my, what the research I found is that this banking cabal, the same people who financed Hitler, who was George Bush Union Bank, you know, they. Um, basically have fund both sides of the war. So they want to keep us divided and conquered. So you're going to have, in Vietnam, we know that we sponsored the communist side and the, you know, allied side. We're, we're always funding both sides because who wins these 1% profiteers of the war? If Americans did not want to go to war. The Spanish War, the World War I, World War II. So they have to create false flag attacks. Of, of um, you know the Pearl Harbor, 9/11, the um, you know the Maine and the Gulf of Tonkin. All of these were created. We know from history that was hidden at the time that these were created to make people think, oh, we were attacked. We have to respond. But the truth is, you know, we need to just don't believe our intelligence agencies. You know, and um, you know, you hear that George Soros, I that he's a sponsor of the left. It, it's kind of, they wage that so that the right wing's mad at the left wing, the left wing's mad at the right wing, and um, and we all lose. The, we spend $21 trillion on debt, you know, and meanwhile we close the schools, cut off social welfare, start killing, you know, cut off health. So really we need to stop letting them divide and conquer us the way they're dividing and conquer every other state. It's an evil, you know, it really was started. I love this book because the one about Islam, fascism, and the New Age, he shows, you know, he traces it to the neocons and the neoliberals, but it started, it's a satanic uh, 
started by these cults, you know, that are it's just downright evil, you know, and um, you see that with the skull and bones, you know, it's just an evil group of people that bringing themselves into power, um, you know, and it, it's passed on through, what? I know, next question, okay, but I did want to say it's passed on through the Supreme Court, uh, you know, um, and they're, they're passing it with the Federalist Society, and it's uh, it's a very dangerous, dangerous, top-down, elitist thing, and so we, we don't need to get hung up on, don't let them hang us up. Keep, Keep asking questions. Okay. okay. Yeah. How, how do you feel about the Korean War? You think that was started by American industrialists or something? How did that happen? Yeah, you know, I haven't read it, but I do. Looking at a map of Korea the other day, and um, one thing I know about North Korea that came up, you know, because I we were talking about was you know Trump doing the right thing and with the North Korea, and I. I hadn't realized that America killed one third of all the North Koreans in that war. You, you don't see it's not reported in the news that one that it was a slaughter, you know. And so I think we just use South Korea as a military base. Uh, we, you know, for this, it's essentially we're kind of working with the. You know, we sponsored Hitler, and we're working with fascist, uh, covert we fascists. We did what? We didn't sponsor yes, Hitler. Yes, we what did. Are you yes, about? George Bush and the Union Banking. It's all covert. It didn't come out in the news, so it's hard to believe. But uh, check the facts, right? Um, yeah. Okay. Prescott Bush. Prescott Bush, Union Banking. Yeah, he was he was called out at the time for trading with the enemy. So it's uh, and you know that we need to demand that our news. We used to have something, the Fairness Doctrine, 1948, and it was thrown out without any thought um, because we have enough fairness, but it. It really held the broadcasters responsible, and that's what's needed. Is the media has to present the news in a way that's relevant to the public interest. Right now, it's it, they're just playing us like a political ping pong. Okay, how about yeah? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, the, when I hear the deep state is mostly referring to uh, the whole establishment, whether it's the Clintons or the Bushes. And it's against both the extremes. They'd be, if Sanders got elected, they'd be just as much against him as they are against uh, yeah, Trump. Yeah, I think so too. They, they're and perpetuating uh, war, you know, and they're not really, wonderful. we're not really, our democracy, we pick the one that's probably least likely to go to war, which is, I think, the one thing Trump had over Hillary, and because um, she was you know, such a hawk. And, uh, and the media is angry. It back to the deep state. Yeah, the media, yeah, because the deep state owns the media, right? The CIA literally owns, owns the media. They own the New York Times. It's all owned by the, it's a monopoly. Uh, the government is a monopoly. Monopoly and the media is a monopoly run by the government monopoly. It's all going for war, right, and profit. It's capitalism, and that's why Marx is such a threat to, to uh, you know, like, he gets a bad rap. Charlie? Yeah, Ellen, for over 25 years, my unit, I represented the professional unit of the SESers. SES, the one he's talking about? Yeah. This state employs the government. And I never heard anything about <laughs> Well, Charlie, isn't your, me, your this, job is I, to keep the code of silence going at the FBI, right? Isn't that your job? What you told me that if someone me, speaks up, and Charlie works for the FBI. Just, where and if someone tries to blow the whistle, they get Charlie, right? Well, That's right. Isn't that did right, they, Charlie? Did, see, are you telling me that every time they saw me coming, they changed the subject or something? I, well, isn't it true? Oh, There's a code of silence. Well, one question. Right. How That's why tell, we don't hear about these. Uh, how can you tell a normal activity in the world from a a normal terrorist from a deep state action? How can you tell a normal from a deep yeah, state Yeah, you action? turn on the news, 
and there's uh, there's all kinds of stuff. And how can you tell what? You I think to? look for their agenda. You know, if uh, you really have to separate it out. But if they seem to be pushing a, um, you know, they're selfish, Machiavellian. You know, I get rich, you I win, you lose agenda. You know, which is kind of it used to be. You know, that was. I mean, I was I've been on both sides. I thought. I couldn't imagine that the Republicans or the Democrats were that that uh, evil, but um, I think they have been taken over by a selfish agenda, and um, you know. So you really, I my conclusion is run for office yourself, because chances are they've been bought by the politicians, and the media people have been bought and paid for because they're not going to tell the truth, and um, you know. So we we can only trust our own. Lie, eyes not to be lying, you know. Um, uh, they can all be lying. I know. So trust yourself. You've got to. We all have to have a conscience. Uh, yes. What do you know about the Bohemian Grove? Right. I, I recently read about that. The interesting that um, What's it Casey, called? William Casey, who started the think tanks, he was behind a lot of this bad CIA. What was, was it called? Him, he was Nixon's Bohemian campaign Grove. chief and Reagan's. Um, CIA and head of the NAC, but he was a member of the Bohemian Grove, and they do bring, uh, you know, they bring the presidents there, and um, similar to the trilateral yeah. and um, commission, I, they um, they have an influence. They probably are the deep state. That's a very yeah. a good Make kind of imagine. There, it's supposed to be secret, but Alex Jones and some other guy got in there, so we do. What? For instance, uh, George W. Bush was told that Dick Cheney was going to be his vice president. Right, yeah. I think that's probably true. And Dick Cheney is, is definitely a deep state actor, I think, largely responsible for 9-11 and, um, you know, orchestrating this, this forever state. You know, um, Cheney... Uh, right now at Cheney and Murdoch and Netanyahu are profiting off of the Golan Heights oil company, Genie Oil, you know, that illegally, you know, so it, it just gives you an idea that these, this is, these guys are profiteering and a lot of this war is designed to, for them to have their pipeline through, through the Middle East, through Syria and Libya, all the states they plan to occupy illegally and, um, you know, just take the oil. As Trump said, I would have taken the oil, you know. He's such a doofus that he says it out loud, but, um, you know, they, it's pretty much what they're doing. It doesn't matter. I think Hillary was, was just as bad. She might have left some social welfare benefits, but uh, other than that. <laughs> Yeah. So far, what I hear is that lots of anger, lots of accusations, lots of yesterday's, lots of yesterday people, okay, and and uh, I don't see no light, okay. So give me some light. Uh, what is your tomorrow is, and uh, how that tomorrow can include if you include people. Okay, who are supporting Trump? How do you convert them? How do you convince them? And because because Democratic Party needs is some of them, even ten percent, we can win. So what is your vision? Where is your light? Where can you do this utopia? That's probably we need to win. Okay, I, I don't know if y'all heard that, but um, what's my light, what, what would I suggest for the future, a way to shine some light and save the world? Your vision. <laughs> My vision? Okay. Uh, Re-regulation, you know, and honest, keep the media honest, and, um, um, you know, have just, we need to, there was also honest services laws that we thrown out that required the lawyers in the Justice Department to have standards of ethics. Um, there needs to be inspector generals uh, holding our politicians to account for for something. It seems like the only kind of 
ethical violation they get held account to is whether they sexually harass someone, where what they're doing is harassing the people and stealing our estate and privatizing it. So I, I'm not talking really about the past. I'm talking about things that are happening right now uh, that it seemed like in the past we had maybe there were, you look to the past when there were some regulations and there was a progressive uh, movement and the, peop the media was I think a little more um, honest, like we stopped yellow journalism at one point, uh, you know, and there, it's it's critically important that the media cover <laughs> news so that it's critical of the war effort, right? I mean, I, I don't, I remember when Democrats were for peace, you know, that was what I thought was going on in the 60s around Vietnam, and I, I don't see any peace movement. We don't have a chance as long as the Democrats are co-opted and the Republicans are co-opted, and probably the social, you know, so we, I've heard that we need an independent third party, and um, we need to, we need to, Stop calling corporations people, right? They're not. They're um, if you watch the movie The Corporation, if a corporation was a person, they'd be a psychopath I'm, I'm, in charge I'm, of the I'm world. Sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, yeah, I'm, I might not be saying what you wanted me to okay. say, no, but no, this no, is what no, I'm no, saying. No, no, okay. You, you sound like Hillary Clinton, who I support. It. I, I, I am a left winger. Okay, part, part, so, okay. so that's you sound, it. You are not. You are not giving a big Okay. Well. Okay. Next question. Mm -hmm. Doug. Uh -huh. Yeah, you're talking about the deep state uh, organizing uh, false flag operations. Do you see any potential? Now, Trump has uh, raged against the deep state, but do you see any potential that the deep state would put on a Reichstag fire in his benefit? Um, is the deep state going to put on another Reichstag type yeah, fire, another for, false for flag Trump. thing? For yeah, Trump. This is Trump to be able to do a martial law or something. I think, you know, uh, I don't know. I'm just trying to stop them wherever they can. It seems to me that, that Trump, you know, it, they're kind of doing the Nixon propaganda, you know, like Nixon, you know, was supposedly kind of for war and peace, right? He, he opened up China even though he was, you know, slaughtering people in Cambodia. So I, I think there's... There, you know, there's covert wars that they don't talk about, right? Um, that we have to try to keep people aware of if we can figure it out where they're slaughtering people, which is, you know, so it's good that we're keeping awareness of the border and, um, I mean, there's so much probably going on uh, that uh, all we can do is is try to get it in the news headlines, you know, and um, but it seems right now that their propaganda machine. They try to, you know, because it's election season, make him look like the nice Nixon that opened up, you know, made peace with North Korea, which I think, the, really the only thing that kind of gives me hope is I think we control North Korea anyhow. I don't think he's going to push a button because we kind of control both sides of everything anyhow. These, you know, the puppeteers, and I, I don't know why they would want to blow up the world, but they could if they wanted to. Mm -hmm. Where is the the headquarters or nerve center of your deep state? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I just um, you know the, I'm i where's the nerve center of the deep state? And uh, I think it's a good question. I I you know the I have, one thing I have here is. Um, Peter Dale Scott calls it the continuity of government, um, you know, it that was established. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, you know, that was behind 9/11. Um, but this, you know, I personally look at it. The the uh, Federal Reserve was privatized, you know, 1913 by Warburg and. Um, who was controlling and Rothschild and um, Rockefeller, whoever, the, um, J.P. Morgan. And so I would say that's the nerve center right now, Goldman Sachs. The, the, there was, they own the, you know, the Federal Reserve. And, and so every dollar, I think we wage warfare on 
economic warfare. Perkins talked about this on different countries and keep them in debt. So it's really the banking system that uh, is a very clean, it's like droning. It's a great way of, you know, kind of committing genocide, you know, on, look at Yemen. I mean, it, so every state we will use, like Saudi Arabia, to um, destroy Yemen, you know, and it's really, the, and they call it ethnic cleansing because the UN doesn't have a law against that. They, if we call it genocide, they, you know, there's some treaty that says we have to intervene. But I, I see it as being, you know, CIA, NATO, um, these intelligence agencies, Homeland Security, the, um, actually, uh, Giuliani and um, Chertoff, you know, who were right there at 9 11 um, after they were working together in the, um, at the, as a mayor, and uh, then. The Chertoff group is where Michael Hayden is now. He was on NPR, so they're they're right there uh, in our NSA, and you know, I'd say we're the you know, I'd like the to people right there at running Department of Defense, Rumsfeld, Cheney. That's the nerve center right there. Okay, Ellen. According to Forbes, the mm -hmm. world's been getting better. From a 1950, about 80 percent of the world was in abject poverty. It's now down to about 10 percent. Uh, the uh, literacy rate has gone up from like maybe just a selected few 300 years ago to maybe now 8 out of 10 of the world being able to uh, read health and, and uh, human rates of, uh, you know, childbirth and survivability, world health has gone up and freedom around the world basically has basically increased in the last 50 years with the production of more democracies. Tell me why you think that, can you either re retract those statements or can you forward them to me? Because I see myself the world getting to be a better place. Yeah, I think that's the, that's the line, you know, that we're told by the capitalists, the neoliberal, neoconservative myth that, you know, Milton Friedman, you know, kind of, and those people, you know, propagated and um, so you Kissinger and all. You know, American way, and really, those turns out all of these groups. You know, um, the the anti-communist league and the democratic whatever. Are there, that's what I love about David Livingstone's book. They're all CIA front groups. Um, it's it really is a big lie. They, our education system at you know at the University of Chicago was developed by Rockefeller. You know, to to uh, kind of brainwash us, and we're the exceptional democratic, you know, everybody wants what we have uh, myth that, um, you know, it's, it's we're really brainwashed so, to think that we have some right to go to all these countries and and basically we're, they're little dirty wars, you know, yeah, we capitalism wins over communism, but really what we've done is, like they did in Chile, uh, you know, they took all the you know, peace-loving dissidents and whistleblowers and you know, rounded them up and killed them. That, that's what uh, our School of Americas has taught our you know, America to take to the world in the name of democracy. So it's really a big lie is what you're so, talking so, so about. Just, just Capitalism is great. You know, okay. communism's bad, right? And so go take over all the communist countries and for the sake of capitalism and and uh, it it's just a big lie. We're killing people and starving them and putting up a big wall like Trump wants to do. And uh, I don't see what he's done. I don't think we get the right numbers. You know, you don't, unemployment rate is probably 40%. You know, I mean, they, they only tell, it's a propaganda campaign. They tell us what they want us to hear. I, I saw, it's, I was at the International Socialist Conference this week and I heard Francis Fox Piven, who writes about equality, talking to Milton Friedman, who, you know, is, he's like, um, you know, they're debating equality or capitalism. And um, he basically, capitalism has thrown out the social contract, but he's like, she's, She's like, what about Chile, where they're, you know, killed all the left-wing people and took it over for Pinochet, and you know, it's a coup d'état. And he's like, 
he doesn't answer, he goes, oh, well, tell me one country where capitalism hasn't made it better. You know, it's, um, <laughs> right? US. You know, it, it's just really a, a wrong a question. Of it's not, it's, it, they're just kind of propaganda. That's what propaganda is. Well, how can you, you know, the, as a follow-up, I, I've seen a lot of what I'm talking about verified by independent sources. A lot of what I'm talking about. Yeah, there's a lot taking, of propaganda. Taking, so you're saying that this all is a propaganda statement that the world is not getting to be a better place. That literacy rates. I have think it's increased. better for the top percent, but the inequality. Most of people, it's much worse than it was. So you're saying it's a lie then. That it's good for us, the big fat Americans. Yeah. So, right? so you're saying it's a lie then that eight out of ten people are literate today. You're saying that it's a lie that world that the that the in, that the um I think literacy rates. is something people can get off television. Yeah. So they, there's been a few things or the internet. You and, know, and, but and basically, I don't you're disputing everything, including you want statistics. I no. I just I don't. I think those statistics would be better with socialism. I bought into the idea. What's wrong with socialism? It doesn't work. You know. I think that was a lie. I think basically we kind of developmentally are going to take care of our own the best we can if but um meanwhile economically we're getting fleeced Drounced. by our by our you know the authorities which is really operating like a totalitarian state okay one thanks for making that clear okay uh one of the things that, that never brought up with this uh, the capitalistic system is that we have these cycles up and down, we have a crash boom cycle, and there is no way that anybody can regulate it out of happening. I mean, and and it's consistent. It's been consistent ever mm -hmm. as long as we've been here. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, that, and I do think we need the data, you know. And I, but I think you're right that this. You know, the Federal Reserve, which probably is the nerve center, never been audited. They don't even, their conversations, nobody talks about it. Um, they, uh, they supposedly are the experts, right, on the, you know, like the, the, the World War II was brought, the Nazis were brought about because of inflation. If you think about it, inflation doesn't bring about Nazis. <laughs> Nazis may bring about inflation, but um, I don't think... You know that we we're not getting honest economic data, I, and I think that the boom and bust are probably manufactured, right? To like, I'll take some profits. The stock market. There's a lot of we. If we could just regulate truth, you know, we get we deserve truth from government. It would go a long way. We need science, really, and it's fake science and fake intelligence and, that we're getting. So, so it's hard to it's hard to fix it, you know. And I I do think the the scientist community in the academia, there was kind of a war on them by, as left wingers, you know. And um, I, a big question is, what is science? And it should be investigative, not not um, what we tell you it is, because that's dangerous, you know. But no Darwin, no. You just do what the what the religious people tell us it is. Yeah, Andy. Um, I, I, in your research, did you run across either of the two books? One of them was called The Cancer Stage of Capitalism by John McMurtry in Canada, 1997. No. He described how the final stage is capitalism will grow and makes things look better for a while until the billionaire sharks get so big they just eat everything in sight and destroy the country. Yeah. The that's... other one, there's a book called They Rule. It talks about the 118 people that have interlocking uh, directors with all the big companies and these 118 people are basically responsible for what's happening in the world. Yeah, that makes sense. I, I, um, That's exactly I'll, what you're talking about. I'll get about. those books. Actually, the first draft I didn't quite finish ended with that idea of cancer because that it is so like a cancer that we have to diagnose it for what it is if we want to try to get the cancer out, you know. Um, but it, it definitely is taken over. Um, I'll write those down. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Charlie? Yeah, well, if I was a, a young man starting out in government, how would I get into the deep state? It sounds like it would be very well. You know, 
Yeah. It's kind of you got to be born into it, I think, yeah. right? Like, it seems like a patronage operation. How do you get in it? <laughs> right? It's like sounds, being a king. You sounds like old Cook County to me. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Get, get. Yeah. Okay. Hi. Um, my question is: Would you? Uh, you mentioned uh, only very briefly the military-industrial complex, to which Eisenhower uh, warned us about. And I'm, my question to you is actually twofold: Wouldn't it be better to uh, call your, your your assertions here? Uh, beware of the military industrial complex and the people who advance it, as opposed to the deep state theory because of the uh, the confusion of nomenclature. Okay, we have confusing nomenclatures and competing competing nomenclatures, which are have been shown right here in our comments and questions this evening. Uh, so that's part one yeah, of that. That's good idea. And and also, and, and I am an advocate of uh, nuance and all things. Now, uh, I forget, I think his name is Andy, I'm not sure. Um, the gentleman who, who alluded to the 118. That's Andy, okay. Um, my question is, you know, what, you know, we, the, the uh, idea of coming here was listening about conspiracy theories and the Illuminati and all this. And my question is more like, is do you think it's an actual organized thing? Or, and if so, who runs it? And, or is it more of influencing capitalism as a result of rampant capitalism out of control? Is it infantilism because no, of capitalism? What did you say? Is it oh, infantis like capitalism out of control? Uh, capitalism out of control through and, and that we are being. Question is: Is, yeah, it, last, is, it, is there a specific small group of people that are pointing us, are, are ordering things done in a certain way, or is it a matter of a campaign of influence, or is it a combination of both? I want your opinion on that. It's a good question. Um, I, you know, I, I guess I, I think it's probably a combination of both. You know, I, um, I noticed, you know, like at the socialist conference, the Marxists would say it's the last stage of capitalism that becomes imperialism or, you know, corrupt. And I, that to me, um, I'm more, look at it like a conspiracy, uh, more of a, cr a criminal conspiracy cabal of um, a group that I think are military, you know, like LeMay, Curtis LeMay, um, and uh, Dulles, so I, I, and that's what I, the deep state theorists I've heard um, say that they think it's a combination of, you know, the corrupt cabal of the intelligence agencies and the financiers of those agencies, that neither of which are um, are audited, you know, neither of which, I, we just need to somehow, they've got the intelligence, you know, agencies in Congress are kind of all controlled by them, right? So there's, there's no, nobody critically overseeing so it's just corruption gone, gone really far, it, it's, you know, to the extent that they're totally in power. Which so to me, the word fascism is the best way and to describe it. But yet, um, you know, I I just find that I think the deep state, at least because people don't see you coming, they're less likely to go bing bing bing, you know, kill you before you get. There. You could kind of slide it in uh, because really this information is is kind of censored. You know, you never hear the word fascism on the radio. And I, but we NPR had a talk on the deep state where the guy said, I think it's CIA and um, and the Wall Street. You know, so they could kind of say that without uh, the censors wiping them out before it got on the radio. You, you kind of have to slip it in, but I've, I've called into NPR a few times and try to use the fascist word as much as I can, because I don't think America 
wants fascism and I don't think it's good for business and so you might lose the Republicans if they saw it for what it is and um, I, I think it got worse with the military industrial complex and I mean after World War II uh, why did we even have the CIA you know um, and so they're kind of perpetuating themselves I think it's a lot like actually you James Bond, you know, um, movies, right? Supposedly the last James Bond movie, there was a lot of criticism within the CIA that they let that one be made because it was, it came back to M was the bad guy, you know, or the bad girl, you know, right, woman who was really behind it. And so um, it's an enemy of the state that is getting by because they, nobody, we, they control the media and so we can't, we can't come to a common understanding of, of the threat that is really in our midst. It's um, very hard to um, raise awareness of this. I work in the VA, and I, I do purchasing inside the VA with private contractors. And there is so much, so many layers and so many confusions, and the rules keep changing. This isn't any kind of covert military operation. It's just a simple... Uh, uh, no, it's, well, it's just a, a, it's a poorly designed system, and, and it, it is self-perpetuating, and, and the system is set up so that information doesn't get out. I don't, I don't think there's any way to, because everything is so big, even in my little corner, I can only do my little part. If I go out the hallway, I don't understand what they're doing down there, so I can only do my little part. So if you've got a huge government and huge departments, each of one, uh, they're all very competitive with, with each other and secretive, you know, the next door neighbors down the hallway are secretive with each other. So if you have a whole convoluted system like that, like filigree, you know, where everything's all curled up, there's, there'll never be transparency and it, it lends itself to covert action even if it's not corrupt. And then and then you add in the military stuff and the other agenda, you know, that whole other thing. Um, I don't know, uh, is there any way that you can think of to just sweep this clean? Uh, the, the Congress is, is, if anything, more screwed up and confused because, you know, we wait for them to process the funding so that we can deliver the services, and they don't understand what they need to do. They really don't understand it. Okay. And they, I'd like to go that this is question that this is the yeah time for yeah questions. well I, okay. I think I think Please. it's a good question um, okay no I just yeah right before, and, um, three bottles are my bottles mm -hmm. yeah and it's worth finding yeah no, that's okay yeah, yeah. no yeah. problem we're just but it's just I don't basically I don't see how it can be cleared out okay. to get to the essence ah. right okay. I I guess I think leadership good leadership is actually the best idea I've come up with is. I'm going to run. I'm running. At first, I was thinking mayor. Now I'm thinking president. You know, because we really just need a good person at the top. I think it will trickle down. You know, I encourage you to run too. I, we just, especially all the women, especially. You know, and just honesty at the top. I mean, I studied. I got an MBA. You know, and we always talked about what would the CEO, you know, the CEO do, right? And they're like, let's transform this operation. But whoever gets appointed, you know, I think the leadership, uh, they, they tend to just, you know, if they try to do something right now, I think they, it's almost a, a hazard to their career because, um, you know, you, they have to tell the truth that we're fighting corruption. I do think it's corruption. of the It's systemic, um, you know, corruption, that it, it's not the way the ideal system could work you know so um but it, i just think we we really need and some people say term limits i do think that's good but we we need to acknowledge that this corporate model there it's corrupt you know the problem is that it's corrupt so if we could at least know what beast we're dealing with i think um we could we could all start thinking creatively about it right but it, there, we need to have honest there's there's something called honest services laws that Scalia threw out and um, also LaRouche put in, called for a Citizen Protection Act that said um, you know that lawyers the Justice Department lawyers uh, like have to um, be 
ethical. And right now, there's only the only ethical violation that a lawyer has to be held account to is taking a bribe. You know, and so it's like, but what? Everything else is fair. Game. Everything else is fair game. So they're just they're defending the corrupt, right? And so what are you gonna do? I want to. I'll sue you for being corrupt. You, they're like, they throw it out. You have no standing. You know. And so we. The, it's very hard to, I mean, you can regulate it from the top, but you can't from the bottom, you know, you can complain. I was a market researcher, and so I was looking at all the complaints, what satisfies people, what dissatisfies them. And then I realized in this current culture that uh, a corrupt culture doesn't want to know, you know, they're like, don't tell anybody that everybody's unhappy, you know, I don't, I think the polls are, they, I don't. I don't get a sense. You don't hear it on the news, at least. You know what do the, are the people really saying? I think there are. Who knows? Uh, you know that. But these media people go. I what we, we. They must like Trump. You know, and they're like. I don't know. We didn't have any choices really. You know, because it is a very corrupt from the top down. It's got to be controlled from the top. And the the BS that the. The right wing says it's oh that's the liberal technocrats wanting to fix everything. Well, we could have fixed it through science. That was what they taught us in MBA school and education school and all the different schools, nursing school, right or whatever. Andy, there's a uh, there's a book that currently describes exactly what you're talking about. It's called Democracy in Chains. Yeah, and Nancy it, McLean. It, it describes yeah. it describes the the Powell memo and. Buchanan before that of their four-year plan to change our government into what it's looking like now. Right. And also the other thing is the media is not covering the nationwide revolution of people turning out by the thousands to vote for progressives. Social Democrats are just basically, you know, people of the conscience like what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. and, and the mainstream media is blacking that out. Right. I Bernie Sanders and this woman from uh, New York, Alexandra Ocasio, they had to uh, move to a larger venue. 1,400 tickets were sold out quick, and they had to move it to a bigger uh, venue to have a, a town hall meeting in other words. So that kind of, people are waking up all over the country. Right. I, I, what, we, we don't hear about it on the news. I think they are waking up in, like, especially in New York and the millennials and the universities and... Uh, but I, I worry, I think of the way the Federalists that Nancy McLean wrote about the Federalist idea is break everything into states and let them fix it. And you just, I know I went down to Georgia and I couldn't believe when my good old boy father was saying that he thought Trump was a good old boy. And I, you know, the media must be totally, I'm like, what are you listening to? And, and it, you know, I, he said he didn't listen to Fox, and I show him my books, and he's like, well, why has nobody else in the world ever said this? You know, he goes, I'm pretty smart, and I get around. Nobody, why have I never heard this before? And I'm like, well, it's been censored, you know, and a lot of it came out later by investigative journalists, and then, you know, how many people read, you know, these guys or Nancy McLean? So I, I, I kind of despair that, um, and then I worry that the media says, Oh, you know, women are going to be running, and I, I don't know. That's what they said in the last election, and it, it just really worries me that the awareness of the population is—it only seems to really wake up in, in maybe urban areas. Just, um, a, just a fact to uh, corroborate your view: that same NPR story, which I pulled up a few years ago, had the Democratic Socialists at about eight thousand paid dues members around the country, it's now risen to about 45,000 paid dues members around the country. You know, it's interesting that NPR was supposed to put, does that, I thought they were going to be on in, on the morning edition, of two it or was. three days, it was? I yes. thought maybe they didn't put it on. No, okay. they did. Oh, good. Okay. I'm a diehard listener, so I know. Right. That's what people tell me when I say I'm going to run, and they look at me like I'm crazy, but they say, go talk to the Democratic Socialists. So I'm, <laughs> I was listening for it. Would you repeat the books that you? you oh sure. Um, yeah, uh, Laurent Guillenot, uh, JFK to 
50 years of deep state. Yeah, G U Y E N O T. Ellen, if you give me a list, I'll post it with the YouTube link. Okay. This is progressivepress.com. It's a great site for all this stuff. And um, Solving 9-11, The Deception That Changed the World, Christopher Bolin, <coughs> Black Terror, White Soldiers, Islam, Fascism, and the New Age by David Livingstone. Yeah? You know, the... Um, of course, Eisenhower warned us about the military-industrial complex taking over the, uh, the government economy. Did Eisenhower say anything else uh, related to that? Do you have you seen in reading? So, so, I mean, he's, he's a pretty good authority on what the hell. Yeah, that, I, you know, I've listened. One of these good YouTubes, uh, you know, plays his speech where he says that over and over again and the more I listen to it I should memorize it well no it just happened to be the introduction and I, but it's worth listening to that whole speech and I, I read a little bit about his son says that he he was kind of getting played you know I mean he I you know you see that but I, I don't really know much more but it's a good I don't, those are the kind of hypotheses that I like to look into. I'll like hear it on NPR and go, yeah, what did, what did Eisenhower say? And it, usually every time you pick up the rock, you kind of see that there were a lot of worms, <laughs> you know, going around Eisenhower, you know. Um, but I did think he was, these presidents, they get in there and um, they're, they're kind of limited in what they can do. I mean, and all of them probably, like Kennedy supposedly called for what, the assassination of Castro. I mean, I think a lot of them at first kind of go, okay, I don't, who knows how the CIA plays these guys, but uh, I, I remember noticing Jimmy Carter, one of the documentaries, he looked really uncomfortable. It's like you know, the sheep with all these wolves around them, you know, and it, yeah. and I, right, they just, nothing he could do. Yeah, they're, they, they don't really get that much power, you know. Um, yeah, hey, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think uh, one of the theories why we tolerate uh, people in power and wealth and influence in this country is that uh, amongst the public, the population, our definition of revolution uh, stems from the fact that we truly believe that we had a revolution against the British Empire in the 1770s, and in fact, what a genuine revolution is is very different than that. That might have been better described as a secession of one ruling class from another. It was a revolution, but it wasn't a revolution where all peoples with the most to lose had to have solidarity with different ethnicities, religions, languages, races, feminists, people with disabilities, uh, extreme poor people, uh, non-land owning people, non-white people, etc. So one of the challenges in the 21st century is to redefine what actual dissent and revolution is and that seems to uh, work well That's with your premise this evening. We need, Ted's gonna tell we need us to re real imagine as a people what actual dethroning the king is as opposed to what commercials, commercials use the word revolution all the time and it's been defamed to a certain extent. Right, right, I think that's a really good observation. Um, and that one thing I'm, I learned, I picked up on at this latest socialist conference is um, that really what we're talking about is counter-revolution. This, this deep state is doing, spending a lot of effort warring on the left, the labor, the, I mean it's an organized, also James Burnham and uh, he was worked with William F. Buckley in the National Review and he was paid by the CIA as all these guys were and um, he they were deliberately, you know, like COINTELPRO, just, you know, suppressing the the messiahs and the, the black civil rights movement, um, you know, assassinating Martin Luther King. And so there, there's, that I would say is kind of the nerve center of, of the, um, the deep state is this, yeah. Just as a quick uh, follow up, uh, 
there's a lot of people who consider it blasphemous if we have two different theories in our uh, curriculum for our youth in this country that it might have been a revolution, it might have been a secession of one ruling class from another, and it's almost like telling people George Washington owned slaves. Their brains explode when they have to hear that truth. Right, right, yeah. I, revolution is, uh, it's, it's kind of crazy because I can't picture it as working. It sounds like always violent, but um, I do, what's helpful is to focus on evil and the counter-revolution as, um, as the enemy, you know, um, because uh, that focuses the mind. Supposedly John Dewey said that. Um, so yeah, let, we need to get some comments in here. Charlie, or yeah, okay. wait, let, let me get this one over here, a young person. I just wanted to say that um, I think it's something we should remember is that just Louder. inherently when there's a large government such as ours, there are pretty much any I'd like to remind everybody to keep quiet so we can hear our yeah, questioner, and I'll please. I'll repeat her question once, once I hear it. Okay, go ahead, please. In what we would call the deep state, or the hidden, you know, more closed parts of what our government might be doing, um, I think the point of power is that they create a catch-22 by, like, covering, I mean, there's information we just maybe can't, maybe cannot know is not the right way to put it, but it's just, you know, feasible, infeasible to have all of this information available to all of us. And so that catch-22 of not having that information available, but wanting the information, is the place of power. And so it's something we should remember, and we should just continue questioning. I mean, like, the human psyche doesn't want, wants to avoid a catch-22, and so we want to find answers, but we should really, really keep questioning rather than, just you know, room. It's so tempting to try and find okay. these answers, and that sort of gives in to their catch-22. That's that, that supports their point of power, and so we should really like continue questioning. You know, question instead yeah. of like like the title of the book is solving 9/11. It should, it should be called questioning 9/11. Okay. So that's all I want. To mm. all right. Yeah, I let me just comment. So yeah, the questioning uh, we should question rather. I don't know exactly what you mean by. Catch-22, but the book Catch-22 is interesting, you know, in that it was a war situation where everywhere you go, the bureaucracy would kind of, you know, was kind of entrapped you, right, systematically. But I know that for me, focusing on the evil, um, I'm 63 now, um, you know, question everything. I, I think you're right. I don't know. I'd have to look up It's there. not... It's not that overwhelming, you know, but it seemed like I used to, I was going to a kind of stepfather who was spouting Milton Friedman lines all the time and you know, and so I was just I gave him away gave away my power and you know, you're the expert, right? Or and I kind of thought you had to agree with me and basically I think not that's a dependency kind of thing, right? We have to we have to just trust our own, our own vision and our own ideas. So okay. good idea. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. We do okay. need to move, but Charlie, you got one more. Or? Okay. Yeah. Why? Uh, are there so many different <laughs> explanations for what happened on September 11th? I think she left and just put the money. In. <laughs> yeah. I think it's being Why? actively suppressed. I mean, I mean there's disinformation. There's no consensus. And what version do you describe to? I think it was it was actively, you know, active measures is the term for disinforming, misinforming us about what was going on because our own state was was involved. You know, we had people in there wiring it for demolition, and uh, but we had a story built that it was Osama bin Laden, and and we, you know. Uh, Right. We should have known, and they just got, kept us confused with the big lies. So that's it. Okay, yeah, thank you. Okay. Yeah, I want to hear your comments. All right. <laughs> okay, give our speaker a big hand. Not bad, Ellen. Ellen. Not bad, not bad speech tonight. We will uh, Good speech. start to read. Anybody that wants to give a rebuttal, uh, raise your hand, especially over there. Um, Hold your hand up and we'll get a count and then we can decide if everybody gets three or four minutes or something. Uh, okay, let's get a count on the rebuttals. Ted, you got anybody over here? Tim? Yeah. Charlie, it's three. 
four. I'm going to speak out Five, against six, these. Seven, eight. Okay, probably end up being ten. Uh, we'll go in the usual four minutes. Okay, who wants to be first? Do you have a rebuttal up here? Yeah. You coming up? I would like to quickly make three points, which I obviously can't uh, elaborate on in much detail. Uh, number one, impossible conspiracies do exist. They do happen, but they don't last long. Iran-Contra was real. There was a global narco-terrorist ring whose headquarters was the basement of the White House, which sounds like a bad movie or, or comic book. Uh, they do a propaganda, too, in, in um, Italy. There was a, a right-wing conspiracy to take over Italy, which used a Masonic Lodge as, a, as cover. Uh, they actually did steal the Vatican Bank and commit a couple of very colorful and plausible murders. Um, the first journalism uh, about the real seriousness of the Watergate burglary came from a Kennedy assassination researcher who looked at the newspaper report of the original burglary and said, wait a minute, I know those names. I have files on those guys. So yeah, I'll be it back. happens, but it doesn't actually last long. Uh, number two, when bourgeoisie act in their own personal interest, it has the same appearance very often as a conspiracy. Some, some enterprise looks good, people want to get in on it. They're not necessarily conspiring, they're all going for profit. Uh, so, uh, class interest is acts like a conspiracy, but isn't necessarily. It's not particularly. It does, it's not necessarily coordinated or, or organized. Um, somebody or another said that paranoia is the delusion that your enemies are organized. And third, and really vital. The human brain is the organ which makes patterns out of perceptions. It's very well known that three dots make a face. You take a piece of paper, you put three random dots on the piece of paper, and you see a face. And so the more that you look for conspiracy, the more conspiracy you see. And once you start to see it, and you look some more, you see even more of it. But this is only somewhat loosely aligned to what's really out there. You have to learn critical thinking. You have to be aware of what your brain does as it acts. Uh, there's, a, there's a fancy word for, for, for the brain's automatic habit of making patterns, and I, I, I want to throw it in here, but I don't remember it. Um, but you are the instrument through which you are examining your surroundings, your evidence, your sensations. You have to be aware of the behavior of your instrument. Thanks, Ellen, uh, but you know, you talked a little too fast for me. I can't think that fast. But uh, it seems to me there's two issues here. I'm trying to formulate them in my own mind. One issue is truth. Who do you believe? And the other is trust. Who do you trust? And I thought about that. Who do I believe and who do I trust? Well, I certainly don't trust the President of the United States. In fact, of all the people that voted, I voted for for President that won, 
really, I don't believe them. Now, who do I trust? Who do I believe? Uh, Charles, this is not a personal attack. I asked Charles some questions about unions without him joking around. I believe what he told me. I trust what he had to say. That's how I usually look at things. The higher up somebody is, the less I tend to trust them. I've got a U.S. rep who won't be mentioned, but I trust her more than the other U.S. reps I had. But do I trust her? Well, not always. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Ellen. I, uh, this is a very important subject, the deep state. There's an oligarchy, there's the powers that be, there's the Illuminati, whatever you want to call them. There are people who are running the show behind the scenes, behind the facade of supposedly representative government. And I think it would have been, and you, uh, most of what you said I agree with, generally speaking, but I think it would have been very useful <coughs> to uh, put a little bit more meat on the bones and, and be, have more specifics. Um, Andy, for instance, said that there are interlocking directors. Mm -hmm. Who are these people? Uh, other people mentioned, um, or you and other people mentioned uh, various names, Rumsfeld, Cheney, uh, Goldman Sachs, um, Alan Dulles, Curtis May. But those are just like random names thrown out. I mean, it would be nice to know uh, where these people fit in the hierarchy, where they fit in the organization, what the structure of this thing is called the deep state. This would have been a very good time to have a chart, okay, <laughs> saying, okay, here's this group and that group and that group and these individuals. There's, uh, people mentioned the Bohemian Grove. There's a trilateral commission. There's a uh, um, uh, council for, on foreign relations. Um, mm -hmm. There are various groups. And there's specific people. There's, there's, there's specific organizations. Okay, who are they? Uh, where are they? Uh, what is their purview? Where do they fit in relationship to each other? <clears throat> uh, the young lady, I, I'm sorry I disagree that we should be asking a whole lot of questions. <laughs> you can ask questions from here till eternity. And people do ask questions, and that's good. But we need answers. We need specific answers. True answers. True, yes. It's correct. <laughs> uh, you all will have noticed that I, I don't think I'm, I'm boasting when I say that when I, in my presentations, I uh, you try to lay out specifics in logical order. Um, that's, we need a whole lot more of that, I, I believe. Um, Evidence, solid evidence. Uh, to speak in generalities like you did is, is fine, and I agree with, with much of what you said, as I, as I said, but uh, it really would help to have a whole lot more specifics, uh, details. The devil is in the details, and you're not going to find the devil if you don't lay out the details. Um, okay, like what is the nerve center? What is, where is the headquarters? Now, we might not be able to find these things out, but we have to look. And, and you can uh, lay out plausible scenarios. You can you can have uh, um, you know give us some idea and or you know uh, likelihoods. Okay. Uh, so I think uh, I, I enjoyed uh, the talk, but I think it, you really need it to lay out a whole lot more um, specifics. And I guess that's about what I had to say. Thanks. Thank you all for an uh, interesting and provocative presentation. Uh, so who is the deep state? Well, uh, I think one of the most commonly used definitions uh, for who is the deep state is those who have wealth, power, influence, status, resources, and access, no matter whether there's an independent, a Democrat, or a Republican in power in uh, White House, the Congress, and the majority of the Supreme Court of the United States of America. Um, I, I want to continue to repeat this point, and I, I don't think it's blasphemous post 
Occupy Wall Street, we never had a revolution in this country, at least not for middle class and working class peoples. And I say that respectful of the sacrifice that those uh, brave souls made in the secession of one ruling class from another ruling class when we became uh, liberated from being a colony of the British Empire. I do, I do thank them for showing an example on how to liberate uh, land-owning white male non-disabled people. That's great, but that's a small percentage of the population. A revolution is when all of us are in it together, full solidarity liberation. That's what a revolution is. And that's why we have a hard time understanding uh, what the dynamics are at play uh, when there is something that is genuinely treasonous and we don't appropriately act in mass to call it treason and to bring those who have committed the act of treason, the violation against our Constitution, uh, before a court of their peers and put them in jail for life, you know. Um, there was a secession that gave us a glimpse of what part of a genuine revolution was. And in the 21st century, I think a lot of what we think of uh, in terms of a genuine revolution has nothing to do with uh, what we see in the media, in movies and TV, and science fiction, uh, big budget blockbuster uh, summer uh, films. Uh, we're talking about a genuine revolution where you can bring your kids and your grandkids and your parents and your grandparents to a block party, to a family reunion, to a picnic, to a barbecue, to a music fest, to an arts fest, where we talk about the things that we love, like great food and great music, and we bring comfortable chairs, but we don't leave. We stay and then we talk about something far more important. Our principles, our visions, our values, our imaginations, our cooperations, our ideas of what society should be if we start from square one and, and just reset the clock. Um, one of the things that I've been watching closely over the last two years is GeorgeWebb.com, George Webb YouTube. Uh, he's somebody who is on the inside that you know I'm not so suspicious of. I do genuinely uh, believe a lot of what he's saying. I don't know if his analysis is right on or not, but when you go to George Webb uh, YouTube, GeorgeWebb.com, uh, this last week, uh, July 19th, it's day 22.2, .2, live from the Capitol uh, chapter. He has like five a day. Uh, pretty much laid out what happened when they cheated against Bernie Sanders and when I say they I don't mean just bad Democrats or bad Republicans I mean imperialists you know the system as a whole they all got together and said you better get rid of this Bernie Sanders guy in the primary because we don't want to have to face him in the general election because there's gonna be too many people who support him and you know what they do to people who get that far to the general election we know what they do there's another way they get rid of people and it's not through not letting them in the debates so I would, I would go to George Webb because uh, he is somebody like a Daniel Ellsberg or an Edward Snowden where uh, you know, he's got a lot to say and I want to hear more of what he has to say because it's not a conspiracy theorist when somebody says enough is enough. You know, their own insiders are saying it's bad for business. That's when you know the, uh, the empire is in trouble. Thank you, Ellen. Thank you. Sometimes uh, we get a speaker and Democrats. It's a depressing. <laughs> you, you just don't feel good about uh, State of the Union or State of America. It's just like everything going, going to hell. And, uh, and there is no logic there. I'm sorry, but uh, I did not see any way out. You say lots of problems, bad, this bad, that bad, that bad, that bad. And do you something? That's what Hillary did. You know, go for Latinos and go for blacks and go for this, and the white man. And with that, she lost some of the white women too. The, the truth is that 
Democrats haven't performed well. They haven't done their homework. They haven't looked at the people what they want. They're talking about ideas from this book and that book and this concept and that concept. People are tired of it. They don't need your, they don't need references of your books. They don't need your concept or philosophy or ideology. They don't care. They want to get along with their life and they want to feel good about America. And do you know what Donald Trump did? He was, he's a bad guy. He's a ugly, dirty, his language is bad, his mouth stinks. But, you know, he understood America, what America wants, differential way. And he, he did right strategy that what states to win, to win the election. Hillary focused on numbers. Trump focused on winning, and he won. The, 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 let's, let's, let's talk about it. What Kim Bolger, Kim Bolger said in his speech, it's a very well, that is, that is the reality. The whole world is better off right now than it was 10 years back, 20 years back, 50 years back. Whole world is better off. You know, they are not bagging at America. They can live on their own. Europe is living on their own. China is living on their own. India is living on its own. It works. It's working. Africa is coming up. Everything is working very well. Now, what, what Trump did, Trump did a wonderful thing. You know what he did? We were, worried, we were worrying about North Korea for a long, long time, and Russia for a long, long time. He neutralized it. We don't, we, each problem is still there. We don't worry about it that much. We, are, we don't think that, uh, that, that uh, atom bomb is going to come and drop on a Chicago or so. Okay? Some people might think, some, some people always might think like that. But it's not going to happen. Okay? Second thing, economy. Economy is booming. People have confidence. People feel good about them. Even I see more black people working on the north side of Chicago than I ever seen before. Okay? It's working. And they are happy. And do you know what I'm worried about that? What I'm worried about for Democrats? That some of the black people may go and vote for Trump and dump the Democrats. Some of the Latinos may go and vote for Trump in spite of, you know, because in a Latino community, they do not want lots of Latinos coming here. We have enough Latinos. And Trump is right. I mean, I mean, if you want to be a sweetheart, none of those Democrats with their sweethearts they're opening up their doors and their houses and their businesses. Hey, welcome here. You know, you just you just walk in the country and now I give you place to place to sleep and place to you know get 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 organized. Nobody's doing that. So what 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 we are talking about? What this bleeding heart is all about? Okay, you are crying, you are screaming, wow, well, you know these things. You know, forget about 20 years ago. Now tomorrow. I'm sorry, I'm going to take one, one more minute I want, okay, there's plenty of time. The, the, the reality is that a democratic system is not going to work. The Republican, not party politics is over. We are moving in a thing. What Trump is doing is that he decides what he wants and then people to come up with solution. People are going to fix it. Instead of endless committee meeting, endless going on, this thing, this thing, this fighting, this thing, this guy said this thing, it's a shut up. Okay, this is what I want. You figure, you are a secretary of state, you are secretary of defense, you figure it out. And we'll go, let's move on. And that, that's the way it's going to work. And like it or not, technology coming, and that is the way it's going to be. Thank you. You know, one of the most underreported things in the world today is how much better off we are than we were a hundred years ago. If you'd like to go back to a hundred years ago, be my guest, because we're a lot better off now. And the, for me, the major trends that have driven it are the rise of global capitalism, the rise of free trade, the rise of the democratic institutions, and we're probably at one of the greatest flowerings of human ingenuity we have seen in generations. And it's so short. The point is, is what we're doing in the world today is it's not inevitable that we're going to keep going this way. 
we had a similar conditions before World War I. And all of a sudden, because of some stupid little assassination in, uh, in, of, of an archduke, we had World War I. And for the next 80 years, the world was closed to free trade and capitalism and globalization. What we have seen in just the last 20 years, or maybe the last 50, I've mentioned it before, 75% of the world was in abject poverty in 1950. It's now down to 10%. We have seen the rise of literacy from about maybe a small elite to about 8 out of 10 people having the ability to read and write. That means our education levels are going up. That also means, too, that uh, economically, I think we're a lot better off. Now, I am not saying that there are not problems to solve out there, because there are. And you think we'd be able to do it by uh, being able to do things. But what you don't hear, and our media is great at this, William Randolph Hearst said it best, if it bleeds, it leads. We don't hear about the good stuff, about the democracies going forward, about even some of the successes in uh, Iraq and Afghanistan that are not widely publicized. If everything goes to hell in a handbasket, of course you're going to hear about it. But generally, democracy is still spreading around the world, even though we have seen some of the rise of dictatorships and this class warfare stuff going on. I don't think it is a, there is a deep conspiracy to worry about. What we really need to worry about is somebody like Trump with his tariff wars. What we really need to worry about are some of these iron hand dictators that are arising and promising the world a better place. And there is no better way to do it than to initiate some form of class warfare against whatever one another. Now I'm also for, you know, social a social safety net like social security, like unemployment insurance and other things that are around to, to help out the poor and, and those in need. But you also have to remember we if we do not create wealth through the government or social programs. It's done through capitalism. And the thing is, what is really lacking right now is the special <coughs> things we give the businesses. You know, a company like Walmart, when it wants to come in and get its tax abatements. Or a company like Amazon, wanting to go up and get all these tax abatements and special favors from the government. That's what we should be decrying, because there's a lot more of that than any, than any other this welfare fraud that a lot of the people talk about. <coughs> I honestly think that we need more capitalism, much more. Oh, yeah. And that means ownership of land, ownership of property, and ownership of everything. Else. The main thing between us in the United States and the rest of the world is we have an effective capitalistic system where we can prove ownership, we can take loans out, we can uh, start a business with, real, with, with minimal government regulation. Other countries around the world, the poor work just as hard. They, would, they, they do what they have to do to get by, but they don't have ownership or access to capital. What it means is that uh, there are a few things that are working in their favor, like micro lending, like other products in the world, but on the whole, what is working is globalization, the spread of capitalism, uh, the rise of the internet and the freedoms that it can give, and generally a lot more access to information. Even during Ellen's speech alone, I was checking out some of the references on my laptop over here, just, you know, trying to get a little background on some of this stuff. But that's my take. Thank you. Oh, Okay. I can wait. All right. Okay. Uh, uh, some of you may have heard my talks here over the last 10 years or so uh, on censored news. Uh, basically, my brother and I run a, a translation service where we take books uh, in the format of five or 10,000 pages and translate that mass into a one-page cliff note that somebody will read in five minutes. We specialize in database translations or condensations of blacked-out news. and. Ellen is absolutely right. Uh, the billionaires that own and operate our media have control of the media to the point where they are able to create a bubble 
in America, Americans live in a bubble of mythology and ignorance on certain subjects. You get outside of America and certain kinds of things are common knowledge around the world that are not common knowledge among about half of our population here. We're up to almost 50% now. We're over 50% of people that have stepped through the barrier, a psychological barrier that exists on the subject of 9-11. We talked about this over the years. Uh, one of the best books you can buy every year is a thing called Censored News out of Sonoma State. It's the 41st edition, came out in 2018, last October. It's a paper, trade paperback that comes out every year. The students, researchers, and the professors, they sort through about 100 stories that got covered somewhere but then blacked out by the media. They, they call it down to the top 25 most explosive blacked out stories that would change our country overnight if they were covered rather than intentionally blacked out. And you, as you've seen from some of the comments in the audience tonight, some people are on one side of the psychological barrier on certain subjects, and some people have stepped through the barrier and actually looked at the forensic evidence. Professor Griffin wrote 12 books on 9-11 incidentally. And he got started when a friend of his sent him a videotape in 2004. He said, David, you don't need an open mind to understand this. You need a 30% open mind and a 7th grade education. That's how easy it is to understand the facts. And if you want to know what's going on in America today, you start with one simple fact. Well, let's have a show of hands here. Who knows how long the administration of this thing called ICE ripping kids away from their uh, immigrant family. How long has the ICE organization been in existence? Does anybody know that the exact date it was for? I think it was 2011 or 2009. Well, 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 immigration, what is it? Immigration. I see. The I, immigration and, uh, control. Well, that was like what about you're the Patriot right, Act? Right. Does anybody know when the Patriot Act came to yeah. 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 After the yeah. Department of Homeland Security. 9-11. These things were all prepared before 9-11 happened. They were, the Patriot Act was ready to go. They dropped it on Congress's desk yeah. right after 9-11 happened. Here's a man that's shaking his head here because he can't step through the psychological barrier and face the reality of the evidence. And you know, this is what we've got. Uh, it's what we call the Catholic Church Syndrome. A lot of people originally said, oh, Father O'Malley can't be abusing the kids, so I'm not going to look at any evidence at all until that guy was drop kicked through the goalposts of reality by everybody else that said, these kids are suffering and we have a legal, moral, and ethical yeah. obligation to do something about it. Mm -hmm. right. Well, the country is divided between two groups on 9-11. One group is what we call the group of the twos, and the other group is the sevens. The twos think that there were two buildings that were demolished in New York on 9-11. The other people that have stepped through the barrier, looked at the evidence, know that all seven buildings of the Trade Center were leveled with explosives that day. It was a giant real estate fraud. The, the developer didn't want to pay for the demolition of the old building, so they got together with the Bush administration and said, hey, let's create an event. We'll have the media film the dis demolition of the first two, and we'll sell it as a terrorist event, and we'll bilk the insurance companies out of a whole bunch of insurance because, oh, we were attacked by Muslims. 9-11 was the biggest real estate fraud in modern history, and it was sold to us as a terrorist event. And the Department of Homeland Security, ICE, all of these things, the militarization of the police, uh, police gunning down black people in various places around the country with impunity, that's all gotten worse since the militarization of America with 9-11. And incidentally, Project Censor for six years, 2006, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, each, each year had a chapter in there on the forensic evidence of the demolition of 9-11 as the greatest hoax that's been perpetrated perpetrated on America in, in modern times. All right. So if you want to know what's happening, uh, log on to Project Censored, the website. They got the archives going back the last 25 years. You don't have to buy, buy the books. All, All right, right, Andy, just a quick thing. ICE was founded on March 1st, 2003. The Department of Homeland Security was passed on November, was created on November 25th, 2002. And the Patriot Act was passed on October 26th. 2001. Yeah, all those, as I said, all those things We're came in the Bush Cheney regime after 9 11. So, uh, you're next. You may want to say uh, one something. Andy. Personal privilege. 
personal privilege? Yeah. Okay. I got to come with you. I'm taking one minute of personal privilege since I was specifically referred to a moment ago. Um, after 9-11, the right-wingers went to the closet and took all of their wet dream extremist fascist legislation that had no pa chance of passing, put it in one great big heap and stapled it together, and that became the Patriot Act. So while most of the text of the Patriot Act did already exist, there was no single document. Uh, saying that it was all there ready to go is a distortion. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we all know that the deep state is Wall Street, the War Department, and big media. <laughs> so. All right. So Tim. Uh, yeah. You know. I'm looking we're talking, at you. <laughs> you know, we were talking about how great America was last week, and why. Uh, and I was disappointed uh, that it isn't. You know. America's 20% in poverty. 20% of the people are in poverty. How can you say the world's 10% in poverty? That's I a bunch said of abject poverty. Huh? I said abject poverty. Under oh, a dollar okay. a day. <laughs> the, real, oh. the people on the streets. No, there's a <laughs> lot. Like I said. A corner. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I don't All right. You. Well, try go by the poverty. Okay. So America's 20% in poverty. Richest country in the world, right? Yeah. Okay, so, you know, another thing about last week that I didn't bring up because I wasn't writing stuff down is how could everybody get fooled about Trump telling Europe to start building more bombs and buying more bombs? Why don't they just tell them to get screwed and say, how about if we have less money in NATO and less money in war departments around the world? Don't start threatening us to buy more guns and bullets and bombs. Well, you say, how come Europe doesn't even just say that? Screw you, Trump. Screw you, the War Departments. How about if we have less stuff and then build some cool stuff like infrastructure and other things that are needed? The hell with your 2% of GDP for War Department expenses. And NATO. And NATO and all that. But no, every, all Americans, all you guys are going, yeah, we're getting screwed. Europe's not buying enough bombs and bullets. Right? No, they, we should have less, less of this crap around. All right, so, you know, so, so the hell with him. He ain't going to bullshit a bullshitter. I'm going to say all to myself. So anyway, um, uh, 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 Obama and Trump made the deep state richer. Obama printed $15 trillion after the crash, and Trump gave, uh, gave him another $2 trillion. So, uh, you know, that all went to Wall Street, the scum on Wall Street. Um, as far as military, our biggest, min our biggest two imports in America are oil and cars and then airplanes from Airbus and other places. So <coughs> we are so tied in to securing oil from other countries and keeping the world market afloat with oil that it's just a shame that all this is oil wars. Syria is even an oil war, war because of the pipelines and refineries and ports. So don't let them fool you that these are religion wars, and ISIS, and all this crap about Islam, and all this garbage. All this is, has been oil wars, and all, it all is oil wars. We go to war for oil, we go to war with oil. So, gasoline and jet fuel are going up. It's about three and a half dollars a gallon, and everybody's shaking in their boots. Do you realize how much this economy would crash if it ever went up to five or six dollars a gallon? We do everything we we can do to keep gas at two or three dollars a gallon, and that's why we have oil wars. All right. Okay, we got we got a few more minutes. Go ahead. Okay. Well, 
Okay. Uh, okay. Oh, oh, I'm here. Here. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. No, I'm moving up in the world. <laughs> no oil war. Excuse me, Raj. Yeah, go for it. Good practice. Yeah, introduce yourself. <laughs> the first time's the hardest. Mm -hmm. We'll start in the middle. Tell us your name. <laughs> Tell us your name. What's your name? Uh, my name is Zach. Uh, exactly. All right. We're, we shouldn't still be, like, arguing about the 9-11. Like, all right. Yeah, I, we need to just figure out what... Okay, there's there's the enemy, and then there's us. So this is like a war going on, like an information... Not to, like, be like Alex Jones or whatever, but, like... Like, we need to find out the truth, and we all need to work together to control the dialogue. Media is controlling the dialogue and confusing people. So everyone, it's everyone's responsibility to figure out what, the truth. Like, it's everyone's job to do that. So, like, there's still people in here who think like who don't think that like 9/11 was some like inside job. Like, if, like. No, like, buildings don't fall down like that. Like, it's physics. Like, every single person in this country should know that it was an inside job. That is how we move forward quicker. Like, 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 look at, okay, you, so people think like, no, and I don't think, I don't think Trump is the deep state, no, I think, like, yeah, okay, yeah, he's like some, okay, I mean, it, okay, where, no, deep, okay, no, what the deep state yeah, is, what the deep state is, is, it's these political ex executives in the in politics who are part of these satanic Masonic cults that they are underground. They have underground cities. There is a, there, the biggest one is under the, the Getty in LA, the Getty Center in LA. That's where all of our money goes, into these black projects. All the money goes into these underground bases. And what these people do down there is really, really... The public's not ready to know about it yet, but it, because it, it, no, they, what they do, okay, that, it, the, the, their currency is like, well, what they do is they siphon, they, they have children in cages and they Okay, this is the deeper. Yeah, this gets as dark it gets. This is the deep state that we're ta that we're talking about. Are these they they traffic children? That's their that's their their currency. Their that's their that's how they all be deep staters. Is they all do this and then they can't tell on each other. And it's underground is where they there are no rules. There is just. They can do anything they want, and that's what they do. And it's not, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, it's a spiritual thing. Whether like selfishness or service to others. Yeah, it, it, yeah, and spirituality, no, it's going to come, they're going to be able to, science and spirit, like, there's science, too, like, metaphysics, like, layers of reality. So, this is not, like, like, no, and then the free energy devices, all, free energy, that's, that's all underground. And what we need to do is control the dialogue, that is our job. All right, that's all. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Okay, Alan gets the last word. Wait a minute. I need Holy shit. Yeah, I think it's the last word. No. All right, let's see here. Let's see here. Speak your group. Coming here and spending a lot of time and effort on, on the presentation. I'll be eclectic as usual. Uh, thinking about, well, what's the deep state? Yeah, I'm reminded, and I've told the story before, um, we used to always wonder what, 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 is, what was the Politburo in the Soviet Union. And my friend was traveling over there, uh, and then he, he said, I said, we'll find out. Let's see, see what you can find out. So he went over to the Soviet Union, and he said, you know, we started inquiring about the Politburo, who's in it, you know, what is it, you know? And one guy listened to him, and he didn't say anything right away. And he says, uh, "Why do you need to know?" <laughs> I mean, uh, <laughs> it's something, uh, and that's what you're up against. Um, there's all sorts of theories have been advanced that there's forces in nature uh, over time. There's just even if you want the thrust of history under Hegel, uh, things like grace, uh, fate, uh, luck and bad luck, and doesn't. And then you say, well, there's this deep force that's operative in the world. And I guess you watch TV, and then I don't know how you can ascertain. And you say, oh, they, you know, if I see, you see an event, you say. Oh, that's a deep state again, you know? Or how do you know? I mean, maybe it's just something that took place, you know? Uh, yeah, there's a natural hierarchy in the world, and there's alignments of things. Uh, does, that, does that mean that there's the conspir conspiracy? That there's a hierarchy? I worked in a bureaucracy. I don't know if it was some conspiracy towards its design. Uh, I mean, it perhaps could have been, you know, uh, different organizational structures, but and different societal structures exist as well. Uh, there were other terms used in the past. I heard somebody discussing it. That old one was the establishment. And when I started coming into college complexes. Uh, the talk was that the world was being controlled by the German and British bankers. I heard that every week, you know. I think, you know, uh, yes, we'd like to have more transparency in the world. And it, in government, we saw this week where there was uh, an abrogation of transparency in government. We have a pretty secret, I can imagine this, of all the areas in the world that have a uh, uh, a secret policy is on foreign affairs. And the one thing where you start to see how you interact in the community of the countries of the world, but you feel some compelling necessity for keeping this quiet. And if you, Raj, if you think the world's a better off place, you know, I, I haven't seen anything that's any achievements uh, in foreign affairs recently that I would I'm be that gives any, any cause for celebration. You see nothing but chaos, gibrosity, nonsense, made up, blah, 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 blah. And you call this diplomacy? This is the antithesis of diplomacy. There's nothing there. I, I go to the guy, you don't even know what you're going to discuss. You don't, you don't even know treaties, what's what the achievement. You know, you know, now you're kept out of the room altogether. You know, including the the responsible. You know what's amazing? He you know, he has qualified people we pay good money for, and he doesn't even talk to them. Now that's an amazing. A, every bureaucrat knows the higher you go up, the more you depend on the people below. The the, the people kind of constitute your staff and advisors. That's the nature of a bureaucracy. Because you enter with one particular skill, but as you go higher, you're dealing with disciplines that you don't know. You're, you have multiple disciplines, and you rely on people to give you advice and opinion. And then say, this guy doesn't rely on anybody? That's total foolishness. 
that's really uh, now. Last of all, I see that we have two 9/11 experts in this room who don't agree on what took place on that day. I've heard different versions out of them. Uh, there seems to be no agreement on the 9/11 people. As I asked, the consensus of what what happened. We got airplanes. We got no airplanes. As a matter of fact, Trump testified this week, Andy, that the, the building would not have burned down had they had asbestos in it. Oh, he testified on that in before Congress. <laughs> that trust him? He, that's what he testified. Trump? You say there's asbestos? He says there isn't. Well, that's well, not, that's yeah. not the issue. He doesn't even care if there's asbestos at all. Because <laughs> he, he doesn't, he, he was, it's yeah. A big lie. Well, yeah, no, no, this is, this well, is, wrap it up. you have, you have right. yeah, wrap it up. until you get some agreement upon yourselves, give me a call. I'll be waiting. <laughs> 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 all right. Otherwise, I'm going to stick with my own. I'm going to stick with getting the water. Getting the water. Getting the water. Yeah. Hey there, everybody. Uh, Doug Hinkley here. I'm no expert on the deep state, uh, uh, although I have spoken about some theories of mine, uh, a few talks I've made here. Um, I think I've learned a lot from Ellen tonight. I think this talk was much better than your previous talk. I think yeah. it seemed to be more focused. And I, I think I, I've got a lot of information here with the little notes I scribbled, but I'm looking forward to the videotape. Assuming that it doesn't get screwed up by some uh, by incompetence the on the part of the <laughs> talk about the bureaucracy, the bureaucracy here sucks. The media, blame it on the media. Could be no, a deep blame. state conspiracy. <laughs> I, this tape better get out there on the internet. Or I'm going to call BS on the, the conspiracy here. Okay. <laughs> Uh, it's just uh, one so, guy who got a little lazy, you know, and had a computer breakdown. So I admit that. Your batteries are fine this time, you know? Oh, okay. uh, we had no technical no, glitches we last week. NASA, we, we had none this week. Yet, so. Anyway, um, there, there was an altercation the previous time. He blew it. And, and I probably lost one of my best rebuttals ever. What was that? Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I did a really good one, and then they said, oh, the battery ran out or something. Yeah. I know exactly what happened. Lack, lack of uh, using a checklist on my part. Anyway, this this time should not count against me, like in that committee where you know, oh, it, there's an extraneous God. thing and people are going on and on in the audience and it shouldn't count against me. But it seems as if um, it seems as if Charlie took a lot of time, so I could. I I don't have a tremendous amount to say. Um, the deep state is a um, however it's a two word two-word buzz phrase um, that has been co-opted by Trump and what he takes it to mean and people are taking it to mean whatever they want and he takes it to mean uh, anybody in the FBI or the CIA that uh, comes up with any evidence that could take him down or something like that and so um, that's it's it's just a terrible thing we have this problem in the left um, of um, terminology I'm trying to get our terminology right like I've long said to my friends on the left, uh, well, don't call it choice, uh, call it freedom, or, you know, women's liberty, you know, I mean, how about Patrick Henry, you know, give me liberty or give me death, da, da, da. well, at any rate, um, uh, we, we, we shouldn't call it choice, choice sounds like something, uh, uh, well, I mean, should you have a choice of uh, getting chocolate ice cream as opposed to vanilla ice cream, it's some kind of trivial thing, it seems like, but it isn't trivial, it's a women, women's rights, and, um, it ought to be called something to do with freedom. It, it's, people have started calling it reproductive freedom. I mean, this is like 20 years since I had the idea that it should be called freedom, something freedom. But at any rate, uh, words matter, semantics matter. Um, this is the thing, I often called what my concept was the shadow government. I heard that uh, phrase in the UFO um, um, research community. Um, and um, it's, you know, there can be several different types of, uh, other people say rogue government agents or whatever, and that's what uh, the claim is that 9-11 was committed by rogue government agents. I mean, agents in the CIA, perhaps they had connections to uh, George W. Bush, etc. But it's hard. People don't come down, come up with any names too often. Um, sometimes we find names associated with the JFK assassination, and and they've been murdered or something like that, and it's hard to get it. But then, you know, sometimes you have a deathbed confession and it doesn't get enough media attention. 
So um, whether there was a shadow government, rogue CIA agents that killed uh, JFK and RFK to cover it up, um, uh, we don't know for sure. It takes research. Keep, we must keep on hitting at the uh, any elements in the government that are rogue, meaning they're uh, going aside from the, um, um, the regular <coughs> law and order, the, the, the thing that they should be, they should be reporting to the president. We always thought that um, the president was at least a possibility of being honorable. Uh, Carter might have been able to report on the UFO uh, cover-ups uh, if he had been able to get the information, but he was shut out of it. And so there was this shadow government uh, that Carter couldn't get at. I mean, the last president that was able to get at the UFO cover-up shadow government was Nixon, because he was able to, uh, at one point, take uh, Johnny Gleason, this is a story recounted oh, by his wife, no. he was able to take Johnny Gleason to see the aliens at, a, at an Air Force base, so it might have been Wright Patterson. Okay, I will shut up, but uh, Nixon Boy, was the last one that really, uh, after that, the, the rogue elements in our government really, really did get shadowy, and they wouldn't report it all to the president. Microphone. None of you have even begun to touch on the half of it. First level you see in the news. Second level is behind the scenes. Third level you call the billionaires. Fourth level, the Illuminati. And the fifth level is Satan. There is a one world government coming, and the Antichrist will appear. And when that happens, then the fireworks really begin. All you have to do, read Matthew 24, go over the book of Revelation. When the fig tree is in bloom, Summer is there. We don't have as much time as we think we do. Thank you. Okay. I used to say that I've heard everything from the ridiculous to the sublime in this particular group. Okay. <laughs> but I'm really I'm going to add a third category. And it's people who really should be taking their medication before they come and talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ellen. You get the last word. <laughs> yes. Okay, Ellen. Give her 20 minutes. <laughs> 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 Yeah, okay. Uh, thanks for your comments, everybody. I um I I got a lot out of them. I thought I'd try to address some of them. Uh that were much more better useful. prepared um, speech. More useful. Yeah, uh so um Ted, uh the idea of being more specific, I, I like that, and I, I think it's interesting why, you know, what I, I recommend these books, I look at the indexes, uh, because they touch on subjects that are, that are difficult, you know, to talk about. One, uh, I had you know, a couple of people say, don't mention Zionism. And um, really, the, the two experts uh, pretty much have traced the nerve center to Zionist, uh, the revisionist Zionism, and um, you know, as the ones that did it. And so it's, uh, but yet, I spoke on that at Newberry Park, and I got, you know, 
at, at the you're sitting on a soapbox and the suffragettes are there and <coughs> this guy came at me you you know anti-semitic bitch and I, I mean all I said was uh, you know that there was training by the Israelis uh, you know on uh, of our police and that's true uh, you know Ron Emanuel's brought those police here uh, I work, you know, with the Alliance Against Racist Political Repression, and I know there's been a lot of, I try to get the people who've been tortured into having to falsely confess to crimes they didn't do, and um, they, you know, trying to get them out of jail after 40, 50 years, uh, with the mother still trying, so um, this is all part of the... Uh, the police day, the militarized policing, and I, it's it's real. And I, I frankly, what scares me is you don't know until you bump up to it. I had that's why I kind of stay in Chicago and Atlanta. I play tennis, and <clears throat> they don't know. You know, it's not on the news. Uh, the NPR doesn't even cover it. Florida NPR has evangelical, uh, you know, things going on, so they call it you know, the target marketing. Uh, the media is controlled by, like, as if it's a marketing campaign, you know. Um, I hear more and more young people on the media, you know, and they don't know, you know. Um, a lot of the stuff, now, Dulles, we didn't know. and But at least, I think I was lucky that I had a John Dewey High School, and um, we talked in a circle like this every day about what's really going on, and it, teaching for a sociological um, imagination, you know, teaching sociological thinking is, is so critical, uh, rather than just taking what your parents tell you, um, you know, so, uh, you know, because. I think that's what it is. Most of us get our ideas from our parents. And in a lot of cases, I think our parents were just listen to their parents. And they were wrong. And so we just have to be willing to question it without without a conflict or, I don't know, you know, not being afraid of authority um, to challenge the authority. So, uh, but it, it's easier when you see it done. Um, so anyhow, but other comments, I, uh, you know, the Marxist ideas I think are important, um, and I, you know, we, I hope they get taught in school, and I, you know, I think we see, I'm glad there's some media and some people talking about it, I'm glad we have this, but there really is a deliberate forces, um, they're trying to dumb us down, and it's so much propaganda, and uh, and that is deliberate, and it, it could be regulated in order to be stopped. Um, you know, the news is, you know, in advertising you have, I was in advertising, there's laws, you can't false advertise, but it's harder to prove false propaganda, false news, and um, especially when it's coming from, you know, a covert source, like the CIA. So I keep trying to expose that. The CIA really had NQTEL. It's, it started Facebook, Google, you know, it owns the internet. So everything, the, England is, is starting to see this with their Cambridge Analytica and SQL elections control Brexit the same way they controlled the Trump election. And, you know, our media is so censored that that doesn't perk through to our Congress, but luckily every now and then we can go and hear what what Channel 4 or um, The Guardian are writing, and sometimes Fresh Air picks it up like she did last week, uh, a really good article, and it, it, we, we all need to be investigators, and we need to teach it. I looked for a textbook on investigative journalism and couldn't find one. I, you know, it would be great uh, to have, you know, the best investigative journal, which I think is Project Censored. Um, and I, I'm on their Facebook pages, and they say that teachers, there's a teaching group that we should organize ourselves and, uh, you know, teach each other how to teach. Actually, the teachers' union is working with our Alliance Against Police Repression, and we're going to try to teach, teach social justice in the curriculum and try to get uh, what we need is CPAC 
um, it was controlled that this GAPA thing that Rahm Emanuel and the city council pushed through with millions of taxpayer dollars, which is illegal. There's a law called the Gillette Law that said that the government can't spend money on PR, which is, that's all they're doing is spending money. All their policies and all their public affairs is mis misinformative basically and, uh, and you know we have to try to stop them somehow but uh, CPAC would put in investigating police crimes and um, you know they need to investigate fraud white color crime public corruption if without investigation we can't stop these things um, so I, uh, I I can't even read my writing unfortunately but um, uh, you know, uh, I'd love to talk more about this, and um, I do want to have the nerve to start speaking up. But read the end of this book. The beauty of deep state, and this, these writers particularly are, they do name names. They're using the investigative method, and um, they what the CIA or the FBI, you know, Justice Department should be doing they're doing and a lot of what I write about is saying why why doesn't they use this evidence to prosecute these guys and um, we have to demand that I don't know if they'll ever they're actively trying to keep these you know these things from happening but uh, a couple minutes I, I think we uh, I think we can uh, win if we um, if we really do it's, it's history and standing up and you know, they'll say we don't have a legal license, so you can't go to the Supreme Court. But uh, I got, we got to challenge that. They let in the stupidest things to the Supreme Court. A good example of what we need is like Clarence Darrow worked with socialists, the, um, people, and the journalists to research the cases. So we, we really need to work together, investigative and uh, the prosecutors, to go after the bad guys. Okay. okay, Ellen, before you go, gavel us out. What? Gavel us out. Oh, bring bring the gavel, gavel and tell us we're adjourned. I like it. <laughs> Judge Ellen, okay, we're adjourned. <laughs>